This is a DAB radio that I use. Um, it's a DAB Wi-Fi internet radio. Um, but if I go downstairs into the kitchen or anywhere, anywhere like that, I like to keep on listening to the same uh, station that I would be if I was up here. Now, I've previously built um, a simple FM transmitter into this, so that it just retransmits whatever I'm tuned into using this radio. Um, but the transmitter that's built into it that I've put in is just a simple um, resonant um, VHF circuit, not very stable, and uh, it only, tra only transmits in mono. So I went on to eBay and for uh, £3.10 I bought this little gadget. It's this little thing for £3.10. Um, it's a PLL stereo transmitter. Tiny little thing, but I've got no intention of using it with any sort of eye device. We're going to rip it to bits, see what's inside, and we're going to build it into the um, DAB radio. Held together with screws. How about that? screwed out. Let's see if we can zoom in on this a little bit. I've done some googling of the part numbers and it turns out the, the interesting chip is this one here really. This is the complete FM transmitter on a chip with stereo encoder. It also does RDS encoding as well. Uh, just feed it left and right audio. I squared C bus control. It's a uh, neat thing but it's very very tiny you can see this is a standard watch type crystal here and that chip is very small uh, the data sheet has it down well, it's a, a QN8027 looking at the pins we need to solder our wires onto this is the obviously the iPod connector so we've got pin 2 which is ground Pin 4 is the left input, pin 16 is also ground, pin 18 we need to supply with 3.3 .3 volts and pin 30 is also ground. So look at the other side of the connector, Let's zoom in a bit there I think. Okay, pin 1, don't forget I've turned this around now so pin 1 is on the other side, pin 1 is ground. Pin 3 is the right input. Pin 7, oh well, Apple don't want you to know what pin 7 does. Pin 11 is ground. Pin 13 is serial. Pin 15 is ground. Pin 21 is accessory enable. I think that obviously tells the iPod it's got something plugged into it. Um, 23 USB power. Now I think that because our adapter our transmitter um, just on the side there it's got a DC input jack and that's used to charge the iPod and USB pin 25 is USB data but we're not going to be using those connectors anyhow and uh, ground on the end so we only need one connector on there really and that's just the pin 3 which is the right hand uh, right channel audio. I've taken a look at a couple of data sheets for the various i devices and the pinout of the connector and um, well pin 7 just doesn't seem to want to exist really. Um, this chart here we go from 5, 6 then to 8 doesn't mention pin 7 Okay, that's peeled away without too much drama.
one side done, just the other side to do. Makes it much easier when you remove the connector. I know it's fatal. Much easier. Just to remove the connector and then then remove the pins. Okay, I think that's on there without a short. That is really. I'm gonna have to look at that one as a round magnifier. Put a bit of solder on that pad, I think. Not really using the best of wire. Solder on the pads. Okay, so I've soldered a 3.5mm socket on the end so I can take some audio from the computer just for testing. And here are our leads, so I'm going to set up my power supply for 33 volts. And let's go! Let's turn this around so we can see the magic smoke. I'm going to try and hold that down somewhere so it doesn't fall on the floor. Okay. Now you can see that it's actually turned off. Now I did power this up before. Let me just show you what's going on here. It turns off if you don't have an audio signal going in. If you touch a button, it'll come back to life again. And we're tuned in for. 102 megahertz there. I think 102 is reasonably free. Let's try that on the radio. To pick that up I'm just going to use my scanner. Yep, and there's the carrier. Oh, it's just gone off. If I turn the squelch down, nothing there. No, let's get, try and get these both in shot. You can see. 
see. So if I press a button on there, it'll come back to life. I don't know, well, you can see that uh, LCD on there. And in a moment, it'll um, go off again. There you go. Now, let's supply some audio. Go. Test that downstairs on the hi fi, see if it gets down there okay in gorgeous stereo. The other thing I thought was pretty cool is that um, if you take the power off, uh, when you apply power to it again, or power up your radio, or whatever you're going to build it into, it resumes at the same frequency, so it stores the transmit frequency obviously in that little EEPROM. E prom. Just one more thing before I call it a night on this job. I removed the little uh, DC input connector that was soldered in on that side. And if you take a piece of wire, you go into that little hole there is uh, a nice extension aerial. So I'm going to put that in there and solder that on. I was able to pick this transmitter up, receive it downstairs quite clearly, but uh, putting the extension wire on for the aerial gives you that uh, extra range should you so desire. And I've also put some just some hot melt glue on the connections there just to um, give a bit of strain relief. I am going to fasten this back up in the box, uh, the little case that it was all mounted in. So we'll then move on to mounting it uh, either on the back or the inside of that um, god awful Revo dab radio. So, catch you later. <laughs>